creating strategic asset in the form of Taliban. They've been talking about strategic space. They've been talking about strategic depth. But unfortunately, it is the war which has been imposed by Pakistan on Afghanistan people. One feels uh, very sorry for Afghanistan people that this uh, uh, they, the status into which they have been locked into at this moment. In fact, the atrocities... And, and you know, Lieutenant General doing... Saab, if I could just quickly interrupt you, because there is this one video, sir, that we are playing out on your screens. And, uh, you know, we, the story is moving so fast. There are continuous updates coming in. So do forgive me, uh, because uh, it's important to get our viewers these updates too. Now, this is a video of the Afghan commander who's signing the act of handing over his entire brigade along with personnel and equipment on the outskirts of Kabul. This is what we are learning. You know, the entire process of the Afghan commander, they're surrendering there. That all has been captured. And that's the video right now that you see on your screen, Saab. Lieutenant General Saab, you know, this is a question that all of us have been asking each other. And, and you know, the pace of the movement of the Taliban, the way they have moved so swiftly this time, without, you know, a lot of resistance also that has come in now from a lot of provinces, what really does this tell us? You know, is is this a new Taliban? Is there some kind of a makeover that they've had? Or is this more got to do with the kind of power they literally have enjoyed? Uh, Ma'am, as a soldier, I think uh, my perspective, it is one of the most unfortunate things that they have surrendered without even opposing them. Unopposed surrender is just not acceptable as a soldier. In fact, uh, for 20 years, they had all the support from the US and the NATO. Uh, they've been training themselves. They had all the weapons. But unfortunately, the status that they have into it, I think, uh, uh, to be very honest, uh, Afghanistan armed, uh, Afghanistan National Defense and the Security Forces, they should have stood their ground. Just about a day yesterday, the president said that uh, remobilization and the resolve and all those uh, aspects which have been brought out, the way they were fighting out in mazar sharif but I believe even in Jalalabad, has been captured by them. And uh, what you're uh, yes. talking is about the uh, Afghan National Army 203 Thunder Corps, uh, which was in mm. force, had surrendered to them. I think... Uh, okay, Farid Lieutenant General Saab, apologies. I just need to quickly interrupt you here. Neelam Deo, the former diplomat, also joins us right now. Miss Neelam, what is your reading, ma'am, of what we are looking at right now? And, you know, a new a comment, I think, on the road ahead. What happens next? Well, I think it's a great tragedy that we are looking at unfolding. Uh, I think the biggest victims will be women. I think it will be a repeat of when the Soviet Union was pushed out. And after three years, uh, Najibullah was hanged by the Taliban. I think you're going to see it's a civil war is what we are heading towards with women as particular victims given the philosophy of the Taliban in the past and what they are already doing in the areas that they have conquered. 